Well, this here is a piece of cherry plum that uh, my friend and viewer Tuffy Margina sent me this. And uh, I've been looking at it for a number of months now, trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it. I'm not sure it's going to stay together. I did decide to use a faceplate on here. And the screws got in good, all except one that was in one of the voids. And I bet you this thing is way out of balance. I'm going to start it out really slow, make sure nothing's in the way. Bring this up and let it make its own center. Almost 500. I guess we'll, uh, we'll give it a try. Alright, well, wish me luck, Tuffy. Get my face shield. Maybe switch into a glove, I don't know. But let's give it a try. So I've been stopping quite a bit and making sure everything is in there quite secure. I did find one piece I didn't like and I just put a flat screwdriver in there and pried on it and I wasn't comfortable with it so I popped it out the rest of the way. And I'll keep checking as I turn to make sure everything's going to stay put. And it just keeps getting smaller and smaller. Here I discover that the wood feels pretty wet, so I check it and it was over 20% moisture. I'm going to stop for now and come back and check it tomorrow. Well, I'm back out here. It's fairly early in the morning. It's a little bit nippy. I've got my heater running. And I'm looking this over and it certainly wasn't what I was seeing at the beginning, but due to the fact that there were pieces that were not going to stay on there, things changed. and. I think this is going to look really nice. And I have 650 RPMs now, a little better than when I started. So I spent a little bit of time cutting down into some solid wood so I could get a tenon and it was cut and look and cut and look so I, I didn't uh, film that but I do have a strong tenon now and I'm quite a bit shorter than what I started with 5 8 bowl gouge and see what we can do and I got a whole 680 RPMs and I don't think I could get any more at this point nope okay One thing I was not expecting is that this is actually very wet. It's about 20-28% moisture right there. And that piece seems so dry, but it wasn't on the inside. I'm not worried about it cracking because it's already got built-in cracks. I just about have the shape I want. Let's go over this with a negative rake scraper and then get it flipped around.
Okay, so I don't know what's going to happen when we do the inside. I uh, might have a uh, puzzle to put together, but I'll, I'll show you one way or the other whether we get this finished or not. Okay, all flipped around. Quite lopsided. And I get, get about 650 or so. And I'm not going to use the tail stock. I don't think I need it. Besides, it hits in that crack. So I'm going to start by flattening this out a little bit and then cut away. And this might work out. I might be able to get a wall that comes down through here and leave some of that bark. I got this up to 1400 and it's just as smooth as 650. Things are shaking but it's not jumping around. Now I gotta really look close. There's some sand and stuff in there, dirt. I'm going to get my air hose and blow that out, examine it some more, and we'll come back and finish cutting the bottom out. Okay, I've got the walls about what I want. I just have this bolt of material right here with a huge crack that has an undercut to it. And I need to kind of clear that out to see how close to the bottom that is. This is uh, just lots of dirt. It's really dulling the tools. But wow, we are almost almost there. So this, with as much moisture as it had in, I decided to take it out of the chuck. Well, I did that 25 days ago. I wanted to let it dry. Well, I pulled it out a couple days ago, and it was no longer one piece. It was two pieces. This whole piece had fallen off. Apparently there's a natural crack in it here and it decided to just keep going. Well, I can't throw it away. So I've epoxied it together. I'm going to see what I can do with it. I already reversed it against the block and I, I trued that face up to try to get things as good as I could. Let me get set up. We'll get it in the chuck and see how it runs. Okay, I'm just going to use my negative brake scraper and uh, hopefully I can get the epoxy off of there. And the rest of it's, it was running nice and true. All I can do is see what happens, so let's do that. I'm only running 760 RPMs and I think that's all I'm going to do.
All right, I'm I'm not gonna turn on that outside anymore. This is at the point where that that can be sanded because I got the bulky part of that epoxy off that joint. And we'll move around to the inside. And these two pieces right here, I had to epoxy them back on because they fell off. Now if I can get through th this joint and clean this joint up, then we can sand it and say that we finished it. Well, let's go ahead and do it. I'm using my round carbide because I hate turning epoxy with my good chisels. of 80 grit in here. I'm not going to spin it. I just want to see how that sands. Okay. I think I can save it. I spend over three hours using my two inch disc and hand sanding this. I think I got it pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and brush this uh, sanding sealer in because I have so many cracks. You know, we'll keep a little paper towel to catch any drips. But I want to get a coat on here and then probably sand it again from, from 240 if it needs it. See how much little tear out I might have, but it's actually it's actually looking pretty good. I, so far I'm not going to have to re-sand it. Oh boy. Okay, I am really happy I finished this. This is really nice. It's a lot of work, but I think it's worth it. Wow. It may have fallen apart on me, but I don't know if you'd ever know it. Probably you wouldn't. You wouldn't know it. You can't tell. Oh, wow. This is... This is a special piece to me. Very special. Okay, I'll get the back side and uh, go ahead and get the finish on it. And we will be using shellac for the finish. And I'll be back when that's all on. So hopefully removing the tenon will be uneventful. I've got to cut the tenon off. Seems like a simple thing to do. This wall is really thin now because of the putting pieces back in and returning them. But let's just go ahead and give it a try. Got a block in my chuck and a piece of padded material. Now let's see how round that might turn. Well, it's reasonably good. About 640, 50. Here we go. That was pretty risky, but here, what can go wrong now? There. Oh boy. Well, I think I saved it. This bowl tried and tried and tried to get me to quit. But I didn't, and I'm sure happy that I didn't. You could see all the little things that were going on that was making me think that way, starting with the big piece I talked about that I pried off. And then this piece here, when I was letting it dry, just kind of fell off. The crack continued down. But you can't really see that it's been epoxied on. And later on after that, this piece fell off. And I really like the looks of that piece. And another small one connected to it. And I epoxied them on. And once I got the epoxy cleaned up and knew I could sand it, that's what the wall thickness was going to be. 
it's about anywhere from a quarter to three eighths and the bottom is less than an eighth inch in some spots. It's a nine and a half inches across this way and it's three inches tall and the base is four and three quarters. I finished it with sanding sealer and shellac probably uh, three coats of each as I remember. This was a challenge but that's what makes it fun sometimes. I'm happy with how it turned out and I hope you enjoyed the video. And thank you very much, Tuffy, for sending me this beautiful piece of wood. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And a special thanks to all my subscribers. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to my channel and you feel so inclined, please consider subscribing. Thanks again, and until the next time, I'll see you later.